Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 196 of Category 5 Technology TV. It is Tuesday, June the 21st. Wow. The first day of summer. Awesome. That means it's all down here, hill from here, though. No. Yeah, it's the longest day today, and then it just keeps getting shorter. You are such a pessimist. A Debbie down. Look at the picture on our website, <laughs> and, and everybody is saying, why is she such a pessimist when mm. Robbie is just so much fun? I don't he understand. does that. No, you do that on purpose. They come and you say you are not allowed to smell today, so I look good in comparison. <laughs> I said to her on the, and, uh, just before the show because we take a picture for the for the website. I said, "Okay, serious face, serious face." <laughs> and, and then I do serious face, snapped. and he's like, "What well, bam?" <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Not fair. <laughs> oh well. Uh, tonight we've got a lot going on. We're going to be talking about how to produce your very own screencast video that you can upload to YouTube if you want to teach people how to do a particular item on your Linux system. Great way for you to uh, contribute to the community. So uh, stick around for that. That's going to be quite exciting as we continue our video production series. Uh, also, we've got a lot of viewer questions I saw that have uh, yeah. been coming in. We've got uh, a lot of people joining us in the chat room. Fantastic to see you. Nice to have you here. And um, uh, I would love to get your questions in the chat room. If you'd like to message us, uh, just go into the chat room. Make sure you say Krista or Robbie F. And uh, that will highlight our screen so that yeah. we know that, uh, that you're trying to get a question in. And if we miss your question in the chat room, don't feel bad. We do our best. Uh, but sometimes the, the chat room flies by the screen very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, if, there's a, you know, if there's a chance that you don't get your question in, email live at category5.tv. That's a surefire way to get yourself into the queue. Uh, and then uh, that'll be good. Cool. We got mics working tonight. We got a camera working. Oh my goodness. I didn't forget anything as far as I know. Cool. That's pretty good so far. It's a good start. Wouldn't it be horrible show? if you forgot the camera? <clears throat> oh, look at that. Hmm. Yeah. The same. Love to know, uh, as, as I'm speaking about the chat room, would love to hear from you if you're brand new here, if you've never uh, watched a live show. Maybe you've been watching on Miro Internet TV or through iTunes or through one of our RSS feeds. Uh, why don't you uh, pop us a message in the chat room to our attention and just let us know that uh, that you are new here. Even if uh, it's just been over the past couple of weeks, we'd love to hear from you and know that, uh, that you're catching us live for the first time or one of the first times. And uh, also, we've got a couple of viewer images that were submitted this week. Ah, oh, excellent. How are you enjoying this? It's fun to get viewer images. I like them. It's especially when people baked with cake. Oh, that oh, that needs to happen again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hint, hint. That looked delicious. <laughs> it sure did. Uh, but we do have a few that came in this week. This is a way for you to participate in the community, uh, get a little bit of on-air acknowledgement, and win some viewer points. Uh, first and foremost, I got this one from Gadwill, who says that just on his office computer, he has been on the Category5.tv website. Look at this. Have I visited this website prior to today? Yes, 1,132 times. Wowza. And that's just, remember, this is our, our site that was launched back in January, so that's just since, since January. January. Yeah, and that's, that's, and that's, as he says, just his office computer, not even including his personal computer. Um, so what are you doing watching the show when you're supposed wow. to be working? Well, don't. Is he going to get in trouble? Don't say things like that. Then was I supposed to say on the back. air that, that was your office computer? <laughs> oh, your boss is watching, and you're in <laughs> big trouble, mister. In addition to, uh, to Gadwill's uh, email there, and Gadwill, I'll throw some points your way as well, viewer points for that image. Uh, Harry uh, messaged us for the first time this week, and he's got a, a kind of an interesting way to watch Category 5 TV. And I'm going to explain this a little bit to you. Maybe we can get creative with what, what is actually happening here. It looks like an iPhone 4 possibly. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he's pretty wired for sound here. I get the impression that as you down a cookie, he's actually able to taste that cookie through this device oh, that he's manufactured like to connect to his iPhone. taste iPod. cam or something. Something like that, or hmm. maybe there, there's something there. There's some, I mean, he's, he's wired in. 
I, I anybody recognize the device? I'd be curious to. to I think get your actually idea. What do you he think has that is? his little little points all <laughs> all stuck all over him there. He does. And then uh, whenever you get into one of your long rants and he finds himself drifting off, he just pushes one of the buttons and. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. He's uh, and he's. You know, I'm thinking back maybe in. just maybe every time Chris Reich tells people to have a drink. That's when. He's that's when uh, he he gets a little electric shock or some some <laughs> form of maybe it's a, an internet connected Doctor Ho. He's actually getting massage while watching the show. Oh, it's good double on the you. experience. It's double relaxing versus watching the show just as it hmm. as it is. Fantastic! Thanks for the uh, for the email there. <laughs> Fanciful. We have no idea what you're doing. That is cool. <laughs> Harry, it's nice to have you joining us. And Harry says, you know what? This is actually how I watch the show. There's, uh, there's Harry watching Category 5 up on, uh, <laughs> up on the screen uh, and trying to get in the shot. Well done trying to get in the shot. Thanks for your, mm -hmm. uh, your images there, Harry. And uh, we'll throw you, I don't know, what, 100, 125 viewer points? Sure. Give sure, you an extra 25 good. kind of as a bonus. Yeah, it's bumper up. That's good. Give me that. All right, all right. Uh, you can get your your uh, images in if you've got a, a picture of you, or uh, even take one if you if you want to grab a picture of you watching Category Five Technology TV. Uh, just bring it up on your device and snap a picture of you uh, watching the show. We'd love to get that up on the air next week. And make sure you tell me who you are uh, registered as on the website because uh, it's free to register on our website, but I'll need to apply those uh, those viewer points to your account. So, hello to everyone who's in the chat room. All right. Hey, everybody. A pop-up game from the 70s, Agamotto is assuming. Mm. Who knows? We'll have to ask Harry. Hmm. What do you got for me today? Oh, I've got all sorts of great things. Let's, uh, let's have a look at what's coming up. Sure. So, let's see. Apple is being sued by iCloud Communications in Phoenix for obvious reasons. Google will be digitizing 250,000 texts from the British Library. Dropbox security has become a concern after a frightening exploit was discovered yesterday. <laughs> Sorry, What's it was necessary. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> it was frightening. <laughs> I thought it just, anyways. Why are you so serious? Be, <laughs> be careful who you message on Facebook. It may, it may land you in jail. <laughs> It's not supposed to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you stick around. The stories are coming up in under 30 minutes. Now you got me going. <laughs> <laughs> this is Category 5 Technology TV. I have no idea what you're laughing at, but it's hilarious. Thanks for that little brief interlude. <laughs> You've got to get through those stories, you realize. I can't. I'm crying a little bit. <laughs> oh, boy. Sorry, good guy. He's very offended that, that you're having so much fun. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> do I dare ask you to <laughs> read me some questions? Oh, do, do you I seriously have to? need it like a tissue? I know. I teared on my hand already. It like, actually dripped down. <laughs> okay. I can do this. <laughs> I can't wait to watch that. <laughs> Thanks, Krista. Thanks. So, first question. <laughs> yes? <laughs> well, Send your you questions in live at category5.tv <laughs> to get them to Krista, to hear her read them and laugh. And uh, <laughs> while you're at it, not serious. <laughs> also get into the chat room, category5.tv. Join us on Freenode. And the chat room is called Category 5. Oh, we're good. All right. All right. So first question is from Richard Zabata Marsh. He says, hey, Richard. Hi, guys. On a few Ubuntu or Mint installs, I've gone to install additional drivers, and I get a message saying this driver is installed but not active. How do I activate the driver? Love the show as always, and thanks in advance. Strange. So you've got a proprietary driver that's not activated. I wonder if... If you've got another one that's activated, but it, and it's kind of superseding the one that you want, um, I'd love to see a screenshot because I've never actually seen that. But if you go into, uh, let's bring up my computer screen here. 
system, administration, hardware drivers. Let's look in there. And you'll see that, here it comes. Searching for available drivers. Once it's in. <clears throat> it's going to take its time tonight. That's how it goes when we're live. There it is. It's coming. There we go. Okay, so I've got a couple of drivers in the list. Regardless of whether you've got one that's downloaded, it needs to be activated, and, and in order to do that down at the bottom here is an activate button, which I've never seen that disabled, but I can, Im <clears throat> I can imagine that if you don't have the security permissions, then it could be disabled, in, and what I mean by that is, let's say you installed Ubuntu, and then you created a new user using User Manager, and that user is not the same user that you used to install Ubuntu, then it's, p it's possible that that user doesn't have the authority to sudo or to become an administrator, so to speak, uh, in which case they would not be able to activate that driver. That would be one, you know, it's kind of theoretical at this point, Richard, uh, because I'm, I'm not too sure on your, on your setup, but uh, any suggestions in the chat room? If you could post those for, for Zabata, and uh, we'd love to, let's see if anything comes in, but Good thought. Scorpio55 saying you need to blacklist the Nouveau driver. So you're using NVIDIA? Did they mention if they're using NVIDIA or not? No. If you are using NVIDIA, Nouveau could possibly um, take over. It's the open source NVIDIA driver. And that's predominantly because Xorg 1.10.1 is included in the new version of Ubuntu. So. Um, so it, it's going to automatically default if you don't get your updates. First, it's going to default to nu Nouveau. So that should point you in the right direction. I mean, just get on to uh, your famous search engine. I'll just get you a web. Uh, there's lots of talk in the uh, in the forums about it. I'm just gonna see if. Just want to test and make sure this is uh, gonna work for you. I'm gonna go GK sudo gedit. And just bear with me. I'm just getting. A, I'm just going to test an answer for for Richard here before I actually post it publicly on the on the show. There's a file, NVIDIA graphics drivers .conf, NVIDIA dash graphics dash drivers .conf in your etc slash modprobe.d folder. Now, mine already has Nouveau blacklisted. In your case, that, that might not be the case. Just verify that it says uh, blacklist Nouveau in that file. So if you, for example, hit Alt F2, and what I did is just type GK sudo gedit. So I'm becoming super user. I'm gediting etc slash modprobe.d slash nvidia dash graphics dash drivers dot com. Now mine is probably already blacklisted because I installed the non proprietary driver. So that's already in there, but you can use that as a kind of a a start to your quest to get the answer. And hopefully that will uh, will help you out. And watch the uh chat room there. It looks like a couple of people may have had the uh, a similar issue. Uh, Good suggestion. Thanks. I hope that points you in the right direction, Richard. Um, and what's what that means is that it's going to not allow the Nouveau driver to to load. In which case, you can activate the uh, the actual NVIDIA proprietary driver. Make sure you're using the proprietary driver, and it needs to be a version that's compatible. Uh, also, uh, Scorpio55 is mentioning etc slash modprobe.d slash blacklist.conf. Cool. So I uh, that's uh, that's to throw a couple of ideas your way, and hopefully that will uh, point you in the right direction. Cheers. Thanks for the question. Great. So, new question from Scorpio55. 
says, hi, Robbie and gang. Well, hey, Scorpio55. <laughs> Thanks for your help in the chat room, and now I will attempt to help you. <laughs> for all those who are unhappy with the Unity interface but don't want to oh. abandon Ubuntu, then Zorin OS 5 is de definitely worth a look. It's based on Ubuntu 11.04. Everything appears to work out of the box, including Compiz on Intel-based GPUs and older NVIDIA cards on older NVIDIA cards, then selecting the proprietary or experimental 3D open source driver seems to work fine too. It has a feature to allow you to, to select one of three items, or sorry, one of three themes, Windows 7, GNOME 2.3x, or Windows XP. So apart from aesthetics, it's basically Ubuntu Natty 11.04. Great for those who are used to either Windows 7 XP or GNOME 2.3. So if you're distro, <laughs> distro hopping, then check this one out. Zorin OS. I haven't heard of that. And here I thought here I thought that he was going to submit a question, but no, he's just a very helpful individual. Hmm. Thanks for the uh for the uh the post there. And uh yeah, if if this is recommended then uh, I would encourage you to uh to check it out. I've never uh, I've never seen it, but the site looks good. Looks like they've got uh some good work going on. I wouldn't mind uh you know, we're there's two approaches to the whole Unity thing, and my approach thus far has been to say, let's not get rid of Ubuntu, let's not try to find another distribution of an Ubuntu-based mm. operating system uh, or, or distribution. Let's instead take Ubuntu and change the desktop environment. That way we've got all the core stuff, but we're you know, in more control over how, how we interact with the desktop. This approach is completely different in that it's saying, replace Ubuntu with a different uh, distribution. Now it's based on Ubuntu, but uh, it's not Ubuntu. So, hmm. little different approach. So, I'd be interested if anyone does end up checking that out, zorin-os.com. I'll post links in the show notes. Episode number 196. If anyone checks it out, uh, if anyone installs it even in a virtual machine, let me know what you think of it. And uh, Scorpio55, thanks, uh, thanks for the tip. Great. Here's another question from Joel Galvin. It says, Hi, I began to watch your show recently, and I have to say it's a great show. Good. Thank you. I have a problem. I recently upgraded my Ubuntu 10.10 system to the new version 11.04 on a Dell Vostro 1700. After the upgrade, the S video output on my laptop stopped sending the video signal to my TV. However, it used to work just fine on 10.10. Do you know? Do you know of a fix or a workaround? I already tried some things from forums, but still haven't been able to get it working. Hmm. P.S. I have an Intel graphics card. Thanks and regards from Mexico. Hmm. Okay, so it kind of goes back, I think. Now, I don't have an Intel card, and I don't use the integrated graphics on any of my computers because I just I don't believe in that. But uh, with if you had an NVIDIA card and it, and it was the same kind of issue, you, you're looking at a game, it could be loading the wrong driver because uh, when 11.04 came out, NVIDIA was still developing the driver for that version of Xorg. So that's the answer if you're having that problem in, uh, in, uh, with an NVIDIA card. Pardon me. With an Intel chip, on the other hand, there, it could be a similar issue. Unfortunately, I don't have a solution yet. And I and I think you're you're being very timely with this in that there was a bug that was filed uh, only six days ago, and I was uh, taking a look at Launchpad, and this bug was filed uh, back on the 15th, and Mr. Corser says that uh, he's using a Toshiba laptop, installed Ubuntu 10.10 .10 as a dual boot for Windows, uh, most things worked fine, including S video out to his Panasonic TV. Uh, and in this particular case, says I've updated to 11.04, and now um, the S video no longer produces a picture on the TV. So it sounds exactly like what you're experiencing there. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have an answer yet because I don't have that hardware, and nobody has responded to that thread yet. So instead of giving you an answer, what I'm going to do is just simply do what I can, which is to point you to the right place on Launchpad for this. Um, so I'm going to shorten the URL down for you. Uh, so I'm going to call this Intel SVID. Okay, it's going to look just like that. 
Intel SVID. So when you type that in your browser, go cat5.tv slash Intel SVID, and that's going to um, take you directly to that article uh, that's been posted, okay? Um, and uh, my hope in doing that, not to, not to say I, I'm not going to help you or I don't want to help you or I can't help you, but here's a little bit of help. This guy's having the exact same problem, so follow that. Uh, you can actually subscribe to the issue right there, okay? And then what happens is, is if anybody updates it, you'll get a notification. I hope that they're going to be active on that, but it does, like I say, it looks like somebody's having the same issue. Uh, and certainly if anyone in the chat room has any suggestions for that beyond, you know, I, I use an NVIDIA card, so I can tell you exactly what to do with the NVIDIA card. It's a driver-specific issue because the drivers for NVIDIA weren't ready for Ubuntu 11.04. Because if you go to NVIDIA's website, you see legacy drivers, right? 96.43 brought in support for version 1.9 of Xorg. Right, so that wasn't uh, that wasn't sufficient. Then you get into the where they added support for Xorg 1.10, which thereby makes NVIDIA compatible with Ubuntu 11.04. And you notice that that didn't actually come out until one month after Ubuntu. So that's the problem if you're running the NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. But I I I would expect it's probably something similar. Ubuntu tries to be bleeding edge. They really pushed it this time. 11.04, I, I think a lot of people are saying, don't even do it. I'm not saying that, um, but I could honestly say that you'll probably run into some problems with 11.04 if you're happy on 10.10 .10 or even 10.04 if you want to stick with LTS. Stick with those uh, until they get some of these quirks uh, worked out. So you might even consider, if you can't get it to work, to go back to 10.10. .10. right. Agamotto saying 11.04 was simply released too early, and that's definitely true, in a way. 11.04 had a very firm schedule, and it was released. They pushed and pushed and pushed to meet that schedule, and it happens with so many projects, right? And so corners are cut, and, and things have to be done that they'll real, you know, we'll, we'll fix this for 11.04.1. .1. And they knew going into it that, wow, we're... We're doing too much. What did I do, Chris Reich? That poor <laughs> Harry is going... Zzz. Poor guy. It's going to be smoking by the end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. Cheers. Thanks for the question. Here's a, a question from the chat room. Great. Uh, Sammy says, says uh, just a heads up, that his internet connection is really touchy tonight, so there's a chance he'll have to watch this on podcast <coughs> for a response. But he's wondering if you have, or if we have, a 64-bit Lucid machine running that we can walk through a Flash installation. Flash installation with Ubuntu, correct? Yeah? Doesn't specify. Lucid, yeah. Okay. Lucid. Yeah? Oh. Um, <laughs> you can do that with uh, Perfect Ubuntu. I, I mean, it's, it's such an easy way, right? And that's why I built Perfect Ubuntu, is strictly just to make it easy. Hmm. Flash is one of the things that you get with Perfect Ubuntu. All right, Perfect Ubuntu dot category five dot TV. Now Lucid is going a ways back, so if for some reason you find that uh, Perfect Ubuntu six has any issues with Lucid, then uh, make sure you um, let me know. I tested mostly with uh, with Meerkat, so. That should uh, that should let you install it. Real quick, nitty gritty. Perfect Ubuntu is a script that allows you to enhance your Ubuntu experience just by answering yes or no questions. So it'll ask you if you want to enhance your internet experience. Say yes, and then if you want to install Flash, and you say yes to that, and boom, it's hmm. done. Easy. Cool. Chris Reich makes the presumption that the word projects is projects. I don't think that's how I say it. What, how do you say what? Projects. Oh, maybe. Oh, projects. Maybe, maybe that was just ingrained in my head, though, because I heard it. Maybe. Maybe I actually say projects. Hmm. Just to say. Chris Reich, I, I do these things for you. <laughs> cool. Thanks for the question. 
I uh, let let us know how that works for you, right? Corey, yeah. <laughs> Pyrus Rock. Everybody's in the chat room just it's supporting pro. me, supporting me, it's saying pro no. Jacks. It's pro. It's pro. Hmm. Pro jacks. You're pro with the jack. I don't know. There you go. So. <laughs> Do we have any other uh, oh, questions? We have, uh, we're I have we're a actually. Few more. Can you believe we're 25 minutes into the hour? That was probably like that 10-minute laughing spree that we had. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Think? Okay. I think that's what it was. We will, we'll try to talk really, really fast. You think? You know. <laughs> Don't try to talk too fast. You'll crack up. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question from Joe. It says, hello, Robbie, Krista, Hillary, and Eric. Hello. Hey. On your last show, you talked about... Alter oh, I can't talk tonight. You talked about alternates to Ubuntu's <laughs> new Unity interface. I Chris would say that's alternates. <laughs> Means I'm <laughs> pronouncing it wrong. I was just wondering if Perfect Ubuntu will still work with these, or is there another way to install with these different desktop environments? Thanks, Joe. Isn't, isn't that interesting, Joe? You'd, you'd think that we planned these questions around what we're talking about. <laughs> That's this hilarious. So happens. Yeah, it just so happens. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, Perfect Ubuntu will indeed work with the suggestions that I made last week for LXDE and XFCE. Um, because, again, like, like I was saying a little bit earlier tonight, when you install a new desktop environment onto Ubuntu, as long as you do it in such a way that you're not losing your, your main desktop, um, all the, the stuff that comes with GNOME and things like that. That's why we went with the XFCE4 package versus the Zubuntu package. That's why we went with the LXDE package versus the Lubuntu package, Lubuntu desktop, Zubuntu desktop, because we didn't want it to remove Ubuntu desktop. So by installing it on top of or in addition to you're basically creating a situation where you're still running Ubuntu. It's exactly what it was, except you've changed the desktop environment. So everything that you do with Perfect Ubuntu is still going to impact uh, whether you're using the XFCE, LXDE, or of course Unity as well. So, good question. Thank you. All right. Do we have time for one more? All right. I think so. We got a couple minutes before you uh, attempt to read the news. Go through the news. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a question from Harry. He says he's a fan of the show. Hey, Harry. Awesome. Going for my A-plus certificate. Thanks to Linux and the command line, my classes have been a walk in the park so far. I'm actually looking forward mm. to the networking classes. I'm the renegade of the class because of my love for Linux. Thanks for a great show, and as soon as I start working, I'll send my grain of sand to help on recovery. Thank you. <laughs> That's funny, eh, that, uh, that your, your love in Linux would stand out in a crowd of people that are studying to be technical technicians. So, very good. <laughs> I'm glad that you're uh, that you're finding that uh, that Linux has has helped you with your course as well. I think that says a lot for uh, for Linux and I think uh, these days though, I mean Linux is so good that it could be uh, a novice user that uh, that steps into Linux as opposed to uh, some of the alternatives that are out there. But yet at the same time, as a more advanced user, it gives you a chance to really experience your computer uh, versus just have your computer control what you're able to do so very cool thank you for the uh, thank you for the uh, the email and it's nice to know that you're enjoying the show as well All right. great this is category 5 technology TV I'm your host Robbie Ferguson oh I'm Krista Wells <laughs> she's Krista I forgot I forgot, forgot who I was that was your cue <laughs> Ferguson it's your cue <laughs> I'll, I'll didn't have a sticky note that said, Sorry. you know, Q Ferguson. Sorry about that. Maybe next time. The uh, teleprompters were down tonight. <laughs> because we're completely scripted here, as you may not have, mm -hmm. have known. Uh, in fact, there was a point earlier in the show where it just it simply said LOL on the screen. And, and I had to. I just had to until it stopped rolling. We What's really got to be careful what how you word your emails, people. Mm -hmm. Because uh, seriously, we, we will... We will interpret what we read on the teleprompters. Hmm. It's like improv. <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right, you ready? I am ready. Away. Ready to rock. All right. So from the Category 5.TV newsroom, 
Phoenix-based company named iCloud Communications is a voice over IP vendor, and they're suing Apple with claims that Apple's new iCloud causes confusion with competing products and has harmed their image because anytime someone hears the name iCloud, they will now think of Apple instead of iCloud Communications. iCloud Communications has stated that Apple has long a has long and well-known history of knowingly and willfully treading on the trademark rights of others. Hmm. So now we have to wonder, when the original cloud computer operating system, iOS... iOS. iOS. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's going to follow suit over their brand. The British Library has reached a deal with Google to digi digitize 250,000 texts back, dating back to the 18th century. It will allow, re allow readers to view, search, and copy the out-of-copyright works at no charge on both the library and Google Book websites. The works selected to be dig digitized date from between 1700 and 1870, and the project will take some years to complete with Google covering the cost. Following a code push at 1.54 yesterday afternoon, a serious, a serious security issue was spotted at Dropbox and posted on Pastebin. For roughly four hours, the service allowed users to log into other users' accounts using any password. In other words, they could log into someone else's account and access their private files simply by typing in the user's email address. Hmm. Given that many people entrust Dropbox with important data, the concern is huge. Let's, uh, let's uh, rewind here a little bit. So, juror Joanne Frill is said to have caused a £6 million drug-related court case to collapse after she contacted an acquitted defendant via Facebook. In the first UK case of its kind, Frill has been jailed for eight months for contempt of court. As her ten sentence was handed down on Thursday, Frail cried uncontrollably in court and gasped eight months as her and her family were shocked and devastated by the ruling. Lord Judge, who sentenced Frail, said in a written ruling her conduct in visiting the internet repeatedly was directly contrary to her oath as a juror, and her contact with the acquitted defendant, as well as her repeated searches on the internet, constituted flagrant breaches in the, in the orders made by the judge for the proper conduct, conduct of the trial. You guys can get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The Category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story that you think is worthy of mentioning on air, email us at newsroom at category5.tv. For, for, <laughs> for the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Krista Wells. Krista, thank you. That was almost painful. <laughs> at least you got a break halfway through unexpectedly. I did. Fantastic. Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you tonight by Pogo Plug at cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug and Planet Calypso. Join us in the massive multiplayer online game, cat5.tv slash Calypso. Check out our website to uh, see how we're doing with regards to the donations in order to replace this uh, failed server. <laughs> uh, I'm very, very thankful and appreciative of all the donations that have been coming in. And... Um, Looking at our at our site right now, if you go to category five dot TV, you'll see that our donations are are have been coming in. Holy and, smokes! Yeah, and we're really really close. Um, now the one thing that's holding us back is that, uh, well, I mean, keep your support coming in. That's obviously that's an important thing. But I'm so encouraged, and and it's and it has been coming in, and, and we appreciate that. Um, but we, you'll see on our uh, on our goals that we were looking at a used uh, HP workstation. And unfortunately, that workstation is not available to us mm. through the supplier who said that they had them. And I don't know if somebody bought them all out of stock at the time and, and we just lost access to that. So um, so my friend is looking into finding another source for at least a similar uh, workstation. So that's, that's kind of where we're at. Um, but we're going to keep our eyes peeled and hopefully we'll be able to get things uh, fixed up ASAP. And then we can get Eric back too. I was talking to Eric this week. Hey. And, uh, but he'll be excited to come and you yeah, know, I think so. He's, he's doing well, and uh, he sends his regards and misses everybody. Uh, but uh, but he has actually been able to use this time to uh, to he's he's been doing a lot of gigs as he Good. calls them and playing at uh, different places and uh, so he's keeping busy. Uh, misses us and and looks forward to coming back and cool. uh, and he will be here for our two hundredth episode, guaranteed. Which is soon. What, today one ninety six. 
Well, July, yeah, today's 196, and uh, episode 200 happens on uh, June, uh, July 19th. Mm -hmm. uh, so make sure that you are here. Uh, make sure you're watching Category5.tv. Don't know if Hillary's going to be here yet because I it happens. So. Well, it happens to be her birthday, too. Well, we'll make her a cake. We will make her a cake. That Hillary, like if you're watching, we'll Hillary, make you a cake. We'll make you a cake. Uh, but it's going to be really exciting. And uh, also, big news is that uh, we have some alumni that are going to be here in the studio for that special uh, occasion as well. Uh, so make sure you join us, Category5.tv, uh, on July 19th. Okay, so continuing our series on video production, cat, uh, cat5.tv slash vidprod. I would uh, love for you to check out uh, what we've been doing with OpenShot Video Editor. And uh, we're just having a lot of fun learning how to do some video editing on our Linux system. So we're talking about free tools and being able to do this absolutely free. And it just sounded the like, a, the like a She's like I <laughs> like don't a know dagger. what free is. No, I wasn't I wasn't pointing fingers <laughs> on our at you. Linux system. Yes. Just saying. For free. Just for for yeah, that. thousands less than what mm. you paid. Anyways. No, we're not playing that game. <laughs> just Quiet. I'm just teaching seemed, them. It just seemed like that. It just I'm saying. trying to teach them and you keep interrupting. <laughs> That's what I do. That's why you invited <laughs> me on the show, I thought. It's exactly. <laughs> Yes. Jeez. <laughs> so uh, tonight what I want to uh, go through with you is how to create our own screencast. Now what we do here at Category 5 is a, a bit different than a screencast because we're able to commit the time that it takes once a week to actually broadcast a live show. But you may or may not have that ability to, to commit uh, to a schedule like that. But maybe you still want to help people out. Maybe you've got some ideas about you know, what you can do fancy on your Linux computer, be it Ubuntu or whatever else that you're using. And we're going to show you tonight how you can get involved in, uh, in that kind of community uh, by actually creating your own screencast. So if you have ideas, you can take those ideas and share them with people through video. And it's, it's, quite, uh, it's, you know, it's quite fun, but it's also, it, it's, I, I don't know if better is the word, but um, certainly it can have a, uh, a better impact on somebody's ability to do something if you're able to just show them. Uh, when I bring up my computer screen and I'm able to show you things, I mean that's the hopeful thing is when you ask a question, hopefully I'm able to show you. Sometimes it happens where I don't have the hardware and so I can't, but, um, but quite often it's, you know, it's best if, if you have a question about Photoshop, maybe Krista can bring up Photoshop and show you, things like that. Um, so it really is helpful if you've got a YouTube channel, you create that, it's free, and you can add your own tutorial videos. So the first thing that you're going to need is an application on your computer. This, now I'm using Ubuntu, you can be using anything at all. Uh, there's one called gtk-recordmydesktop. Now you're going to find this in Synaptic Package Manager. And just type in gtk record and you'll see that you get gtk-recordmydesktop. So install that, and with that, we're going to do exactly as it sounds. We're going to be able to record video of our desktop. If you've got the checkbox on sound quality, you can probably uncheck that, because we don't need to record the sound of the computer itself. Instead, we're going to do a voiceover. So go into your advanced properties, just make sure everything is good. Working directory is temp, that's fine. Performance. Uh, zero compression is going to give you the best quality. Uh, quick subsampling you can use if you have a pretty fast computer, uh, as well as encode on the fly. Uh, they have tooltips, so if you have tooltips turned on, you'll be able to see what each thing is. So, but quickly, under miscellaneous, I've told it to not outline the capture area because if I do, it might show up in my video and everything else can kind of remain default but these are going to say this program is going to save og uh, og theora or og video files uh, it's an open source format and it's uh, it's going to allow you to save very high quality recordings of your desktop so when we're ready we're simply going to hit record here or we can go up here and click on the record button and that's going to do the same thing so now we can bring up firefox and we can say okay so we're at google.ca or google.com or wherever you are. That's a fancy graphic they've got going on today. You never know with Google. 
And quite often, one of the things that uh, that I encounter, and, and it's it's something that seems pretty basic, but when you tell somebody to go to a website, sometimes they don't know because maybe they've never used the internet or maybe they've never grown up with the internet. I, I kind of grew up with it. <laughs> you grew up with it, so we know where the address bar is. But somebody, you know, you say go to category5.tv and so they go down here and they start going, okay, www.category5.tv and that's fine. They click on search and uh, we happen to be the first result, of course, so that's fine, And then, but it's redundant, and they go here. So in this tutorial, we're going to actually go up to here, and we're going to show them that, okay, that's, this isn't the address bar. This isn't the address bar. What is the address bar is up here. So we're going to go up here, and we're going to type www.category5.tv, and now we lose that redundant step of having to actually go through the search process. So that's as simple as our tutorial could be. Mm -hmm. When I'm done... All I have to do is go back up here to the stop button, click on it, done and done, and it started encoding my file. So as we, uh, as we wait for that to encode, we're going to bring up Sound and Video Sound Recorder, which comes with GNOME, so if you've got Ubuntu, this is going to come with it, but there's the name of the application, GNOME-Sound Recorder, if you need to install it separately, but you should have it installed. So what I'll do is quickly record, now I've got a built-in microphone on my laptop. Terrible sound, but for the sake of the demonstration, we can use that. You can plug in a microphone to get better quality sound. Uh, so here we're going to use Sound Recorder to create the voiceover of this tutorial. Okay. So over here on my computer, I'm going to hit record, and I'm going to say, Welcome to my tutorial. I'm going to teach you how to uh, enter an address into your web browser without having to go through Google Search. click on control and stop I guess there's a stop button there it was kinda hidden okay so that's that's my introduction I've got an introduction now so that's good let's save that I was happy with that okay create a folder on my desktop I'll call this clips and I'll call this one dot og okay new file what should we say this is not where you enter the address. Instead, go up to the top here, this is your address bar, and enter your website address up here, and then hit enter. Now, I know this is simplistic, but we're not actually creating a tutorial, and maybe we are, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to save that as 2.org. Now, uh, well, you know, let's, let's end it, let's say. I just closed it, but let's Thanks for watching my tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed it. Stop. There we go. Okay. Save that. So all I've done is I've created three files that are all audio only. Okay. So if I bring up that folder, as this is still continuing to encode my video, clips. And if I click on one of those, The audio is there. You can't really hear it at home, I'm sure, because I'm just using my mic, but the audio is there. Krista could hear that. Okay, so that is finished encoding, so it's come back to this window, and now I can save as... I guess it's saved as a default, actually, so let's see where it's saved as. You could have pressed Save As first, and that would have put it exactly where you wanted it to go. In my case, I believe it's all it's done is it's put it into my home folder, there's a file called out.ogv because I didn't specify. All right, so I'm going to bring up our OpenShot video editor as we've used before. And the first thing I want to know is, okay, are my audio files and video files compatible? Okay, so I'm going to go clips. I'm going to load all my OG uh, files. These are the audio files. And drag the first one into the timeline and push play. Okay, so I don't know if you can hear that at home, but it is there, and that worked just fine. Now I'll grab the, vid uh, the video clip. There we go. And just push play on that. Oh. And you'll see that it is, in fact, scrambled. And that's because the codex for this particular file may not be 
installed or available for this particular application. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that from my project and I'm going to bring up another application called Pativi. And we're going to use Pativi in order to convert the video into a format that OpenShot is going to recognize. So I'm going to import the clip. There we are. I'm going to put that in my timeline. Okay. Put it right at the beginning there. And then I'm going to render the project. Don't have to do anything else. All I'm doing is just converting the, uh, the show. So I'm going to choose which file I want to output to. I'm going to put it in my clips folder. And I'm going to call this video clip dot mp4 because I'm going to convert this to an mp4 file. I'm going to modify the codecs that I'm going to use. I'm going to go up here. In my case, I want to use NTSC. That's my location, basically. Uh, the region of the players that I'm going to be using. PAL is like the UK. NTSC is kind of us over here. And from there, change our container to, I said, mp4. That a container is like the uh, the file format, the file extension. You've got like AVI, MP4, uh, you know, any of those are containers, right? But then it's the codec that is within that container that really makes all the difference. And in this case, we'll use XVID as our video codec. And remember, audio, there isn't any, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to hit OK and then hit Render. And we're just going to let that go. Just let that fly. And it's going to actually go through the video. You'll see down here that it's actually basically watching through the video and it's rendering that out and saving that to the mp4 file as I requested. So then we're going to have a file that's going to be compatible with our OpenShot video editor. Cool. Okay. Any questions this far? Um, there was one here from, it just jumped up now, uh, Greg in Texas just wants to know what is the name of the converter that you're using? This is Pativi. It comes with Ubuntu and uh, I'll actually show you the, the title here. Okay. P-I-T-I VI, do you see that? So to get that, it's under Applications, Sound and Video, Pativi. Now Pativi is another editor, which I guess you would say is kind of similar to OpenShot, but I like the non-linear nature of OpenShot. It, it's more, uh, I don't know, the, the way that it works to me is, is more uh, makes sense as far as a, you know being able to jump into it and just know how to use it and, and be happy with the results. Uh, Pativi is a little bit different in the way that its interface works, but you can try it out and maybe you'll be happy with it. But Pativi does tap into some of the codecs like XVidEnc, which is what I'm using right now, uh, but I'm doing it through a GUI, so Pativi becomes the front end for this XVidEnc encoder. So that's what I'm using to re-encode this file, and you'll see that it doesn't take very long, and I'm doing this at 480p. About six seconds left. Okay. Is that the only question at this point? Uh, it looks like it. Okay. It's following along good. So that's uh, good, good. So that's uh, just about done here. See, it's pretty quick. And, and the, the comment comes up, well, you need to have a really good computer to do video production. And that's true when you get into HD and stuff like that, for sure. But here I am. I'm just using my laptop computer, and it's just a basic Core 2 uh, or a Core Duo. Now, this is complete. Okay, so I can close this. It's not an exceptional computer by any means. But it, it works, and it's letting me do all this stuff that you see me doing. Um, so you could quite potentially do this on some lesser hardware. Now, I've imported that video clip.mp4 that I just created, and you'll see that now that clip is going to work just fine. Okay? So I'm going to drop that into my timeline. I'm putting this under track 1, and I'm going to get rid of the 1.og, which I just put there just for the sake of testing. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just scroll over here and see where I want to start my actual tutorial as far as editing goes. See what I'm doing? I'm dragging this line. Okay. So I'm going to cut it there with my razor tool. And I'm going to remove the first clip. And I'm going to use the arrow tool and move this to the start. And then I'm going to grab one.og and now I've got my intro all set and ready to go. Welcome to my tutorial. I'm going to teach you how to uh, enter an address. All 
right? So something along those lines. Now I cut it a little bit too early, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over. You see there wasn't enough time there for my intro to happen before the actual typing took place in Google. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my resize tool. I've moved this over and I'm going to resize the beginning of the clip so that it starts a little bit earlier. Then I'm going to use my arrow tool, move it back again. There we go. So let's see if we've got a little bit more time now. Okay, perfect timing. See, now I've just started typing in there. So now I'm going to grab my clip number two, and I'm going to put that into my timeline, and then clip number three, place that in my timeline as well, and just see where that's going to actually fall. Okay, so that's not quite right, so I want to end that up there. I want to put this around here. Perfect. See that? So what I've done is I've actually positioned my audio content in such a place that what I'm talking about is describing what's actually happening on the screen. So I've recorded what, what I want to show on the screen, and then you can script it if you want. If you want to sound really professional, you can script it out. Um, in this case, we're just doing a quick demonstration, so it's not really necessary. But this video is ready to go. Uh, looks like the clips are in the right spot. And I can render that. There's my intro. And you know from our previous, uh, our previous, uh, the first um, introduction that we gave to OpenShot Video Editor, you know how to add titles and uh, your captions and things like that if you want to add some text. Um, that's all good. One of the other things that I might do that's a little bit more advanced, if you look at this audio clip, I say this is not where you enter the address. Instead, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it there using my razor tool. Okay, so I'm going to actually turn this into two clips. Okay, so I want to clip it right there. Okay, so now I can place that using my arrow tool a little bit earlier on the, in the timeline. So now I can say. Okay, so you can put that where it's supposed to go, which is when I'm showing the actual Google input field. I said this is not where you enter the address and then we've got all this dead space in between so what we can actually do is we can again edit using our razor tool okay remove that little bit of dead space in the middle there and then we can grab all those and we can move those over as well cool but well, we're just about out of time I think that gives you a good idea as to how you can use open shot in combination with all these other tools mm -hmm. but simply grabbing that moving it repositioning your files and now we've got a shorter clip it's nice it works I'll yeah. render that and seems like a really simple well. way to put everything together yeah. yeah it works and then you get onto youtube.com and you sign yourself up with a free account um, you've got a chance to tell the world about uh, all the different tutorials that you've got in your head um, and I think it works you know it can work in conjunction with a blog if you've got a blog already you can use this as a tool to uh, to create new uh, ways for people to uh, learn from your blog rather than having to just ex explain step by step you've got a chance to actually uh, provide a tutorial that is uh, that's visual cool find out more about our video production series at cat5.tv slash vidprod and if you have any suggestions or questions or things that you'd like us to cover in the series email live at category5.tv this is Category 5 Technology TV. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm Krista Wells. We've got time I, for another question. Sorry. I remembered Q that time. That was good. That was fantastic. That was yeah, I didn't even... I know and, then you, and then you stepped on mine. Uh, sorry. It's got to keep things interesting. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> we have literally uh, about three minutes left. How do you like that for time and things? That was pretty good. Any questions in the chat room? Live uh, at, uh, at Category5.tv. Hmm. And you know, if you didn't get your questions in, you there was emails. one question left uh, in email. If you want to try to oh, run yeah? through it quickly, sure. 
Great. So this is from Greg in Texas, and hey, he Greg. says, not so long ago when you displayed a Flash video in Linux, you could simply look at the temp folder for the video file and move it to your desktop to save it. Now that Firefox ah. has upgraded to version 4, the temporary Flash files seem to be moved elsewhere. Any idea where? Yeah, you remember how we used to be able to do that? Well, things have changed a lot because the files are no longer stored in slash TMP. So what you can do instead is, well, here, I'll show you what what happens here if you go to cat5.tv slash Tuesday and you see that the video on YouTube starts to load down at the bottom here let's see here oh I skipped through here see down at the bottom of the video it's actually loading and you can see this red bar now once it's absolutely complete once it's reached the end of that video then you're good to go you're golden and you're set so what I'm going to show you here through this video that I recorded just a little bit earlier is that this is not showing in slash TMP. There's no file there. So there's a script that you can use. And we're just kind of rushing through this, but if you go to cat5.tv slash FLV, okay, this script, which was originally coded by Desticode, is uh, going to do everything for you. So just save that to your desktop, say. All right. Once it's saved to your computer, minimize this. Don't close it because you don't want to lose that video. And then right click on FLV copy, properties, permissions, and set it to executable. Allow executing file as program or executing, Chris, and then run it. Double click on it and <laughs> click on run. What that's going to do is it's then going to open a folder that is created in your home folder called FLV and there's your video file. Now to answer your question literally, literally, your files are now stored in your .mozilla uh, folder within your home folder. What this mm -hmm. script does is it goes through your cache, it finds all the video files and it slaps them into this folder FLV for you and it saves you a lot of time and a lot of hassle and uh, you're good to go as long as you've got that. So cat5.tv slash FLV and that'll do it for you. Cool. That's right, Agamotto, dot Mozilla, slash, and then the blah, 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 dot default folder, and then slash cache, and then there's a whole bunch of folders in there. Save yourself some time. Here's a great script. Uh, we, uh, we created that link to the script for you so that it's always available. Um, so cat5.tv slash FLV, and do pay the uh, original author um, a tribute as well. Just go to their website, and you'll see that in the notes of that file, uh, and make sure you let them know how much you appreciate what they did. Cool. All right. Well, we are flat out of time. I guess technically we have like 10 seconds because we lost 10 seconds there during the news. But <laughs> plans for this week? Uh, you know, nothing yet. Just work. Yeah. Work, 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 work. Yeah. Yeah. Work so far, good? picked yeah. up. Yeah, picked up. So I'm busy. Okay. But, uh, yeah. And I'm on the opposite end of it. It's like. Oh, you're dying down. Finally. Well, no, I'm not dying down at all. Not at <laughs> all. But now I've got, like, I, there last week I think it was like a website a day that was going out. And it was like, it was... It's impressive. It was mad. And, it was <laughs> like, and there's always people contacting you mm -hmm. and giving you revisions. And I've got another website that goes live tomorrow. And it's, and it's just like constant flow of code that I've developed. So it's, yeah. it's fun. But I don't it's, know what kind of people would send you revisions to websites. I have no idea. Hey, what was that email I got from you just before... <laughs> but I, I treat you well, and I and I think that I treat my clients at well. Least, at least to my face, right? You wait till you hang up the phone. Right. And it's like, once the cameras hey, end, no. once the cameras are off, you watch out. I'm I'm. This is all a facade. This niceness, it's all fake. We're so good at it. <laughs> yeah, we just pretend. We're really, very, very mean people. Mm -hmm. The laughter is all a facade. <laughs> hey, I hope everybody had a great week uh, like on the show th uh, today, and I hope that you have a great week uh, for the week to come. Looking forward to next week. I'm hoping that my daughter will be on the show next week. I'm trying to hey. get her to do a feature <laughs> on uh, on computer games for that are enjoyable for someone in around the four- to six-year-old uh, range. So if you've got kids cool. in that age range, uh, make sure you're tuned in next week. And uh, hopefully, if I've been able to coordinate with my six-year-old girl, uh, we'll be able to have that feature ready for you. So. Mm -hmm to check her schedule. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's a very, very busy girl. I don't doubt it. What with, like, pet shops and Barbie dolls <laughs> and her new bike. It's very important. All that stuff, yeah. <laughs>
have a fantastic week, and uh, mm-hmm. you have a great week. Oh, I will. Yeah. You too. Time you flies. Too. I can't believe it's already Tuesday, and now it's done, and we're off. So mm-hmm. take care. See we'll, you, uh, we'll talk to you next week. <laughs> See ya.